Hola amigos y amigas, my name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to explore the Node.js MySQL NPM package and we're going to create a simple beer API and in particular we're just going to have a look at creating a few queries such as displaying all records, displaying a specific record by ID, adding new records, deleting records and updating existing records. To do this I will be using XAMPP to run my database and so we'll be working in the good old PHP my admin. I've also created an article where you can find more details and all the links and the source code will be also there. If you find this video useful make sure that you share it with your friends, family and pets and give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel and now let's jump on the computer and get started. Welcome everybody, let's get started by initializing a new project and then we can have a look at XAMPP and creating the database. Now first of all, I am already inside my project folder so I can do left shift right click open PowerShell window here. If you're on Mac obviously you have to cd to your project folder in your terminal and then initialize a new project by doing npm init. This will ask us a couple of questions and all I'm going to do is give my project a package name of node.js-mysql and then just continue pressing enter. Once we're done, this will create the package.json file for us and now I can open my project in Visual Studio Code by doing code and dot. This opens Visual Studio Code for me, which is great and I have my project files here on the left side. So if you were to open package.json file, you will see that we have a very basic project at the moment and we need to install some of the dependencies. Now I'm going to go back to PowerShell and install the dependencies that we need. So let's clear this one first and let's install the dependencies. So let's do npm install and the dependencies that we need are express mysql and the body parser. Press enter and this should take a couple of seconds to install. And as you can see in package.json, we have the dependencies body parser express in mysql. And the last dependency that I want to add is the node mon, so we don't have to restart the server every time we make some changes on our project. And to do this, we can simply do npm install dash dash save dash dev as this is a development dependency one and we're done. This should take a couple of seconds as well and we should be good to go. Now that we have Nodemon installed let's make sure that our project starts with Nodemon. So under here under scripts we can do start column and then inside quotes we can do not one app.js and then comma. And now let's add the app.js file here inside our folder. So new file app.js and we're going to be mainly working in this file today. So let's press enter and to run our application all we have to do is go to the uh, PowerShell and do npm start. This should hopefully start to the server and as you can see everything is working fine but if we go to the page now nothing will happen because we haven't actually set up anything yet. So let's go back and start setting up some of the basics for application. So the first uh, few things that we need to do is require express body parser and MySQL. So let's do const express equals require express in single quotes and it's pretty much up to you whether you want to finish your lines with uh, semicolons or not. I'm just going to leave it with that just because it looks cleaner to me but I don't think that there is any difference. So now let's do const body parser and let's require and let's require the body parser body dash parser like this and we're done. And then the last thing that we need to require is the MySQL. So we can do const 
mysql and then equals require and then inside here we can just do mysql and we are done now let's set up or uh, express application under the variable of app so we can do const app equals express just like this and then let's set up a port number or app can listen to on so we can do const uh, port equals process um, dot environment dot port and this is mainly if you want to actually publish your application but today we are mainly going to be developing it on our local host so we are just going to be using so we're just going to be using the port number of 5000 and that should be fine now as we're here we might as well now let's not forget to make sure that our app is using the body parser because we want to pass uh, some JSON data later on. And to do this, we need to add two lines. First of all, let's do app.use uh, body parser, just like this. And then we can do URL, uh, encode it. And inside here, we need to pass this as extended false. And then we need to do app.use body parser dot json and this will help us when we are passing a json data to some of our queries okay we are pretty much done with the basics and then here and then inside here is where we'll be adding our mysql codes so let's leave it as it is and the last thing that we need to do inside here is make sure that our app is listening on the uh, environment port or the port 5000 in this case because we are not a host it's going to be 5000 so let's do that we can do a comment here listen on environment port or ports 5000 to do this we can do app.listen and inside here and inside here we have to pass the port number and then this will be an arrow function with console dot log and the console log i just want to say something like listen on port on port and then we can pass the port variable from here so let's copy this and paste it okay we should be good to go so if we save this and run our application as you can see we don't have any errors in here which is good um, we did run the application earlier, so we don't have to run it again. We did do a, uh, npm start and node one just restarts automatically. Uh, but sometimes if you get a problem, you can always control and C or command and C to, to terminate the job and restart it. All right. So if you go to the browser now and refresh and go to localhost with the port number of 5000, you should see this message can I get and this is a good thing okay now that we have the basic setup let's have a look at our database first of all and before we do that I just wanted to mention that I will be using postman in this project so if you wanted to download this it will make our life a lot easier when we, uh, when we want to uh, get data post data delete data and so on it's very useful it's free you can download it the link will be in the description below and yeah you can get it on windows mac and linux i believe so make sure you get that and for the mysql i will be using xamp which i have already configured so i have a basic xamp configuration where I can run Apache and MySQL. So let me run those services and I will go to localhost PHP my admin index.php and this will be allow me to log into the uh, database portal. So my username is root and the password is password. And here is where we'll be creating our database. But of course, feel free to use whatever tool you like. I think that this is just easy and I already had it installed. First of all, let's create a new database. And to do this, we can go under here, databases. Let me zoom in a little bit. And we need to give our database a name. So for this, I'm just going to use the same one as I did on my blog post. So Node.js underscore beers. 
and then I will just click create. Now this is going to ask me how many columns do you want and and I believe that I need five columns but you can always add more or you can delete columns as well. Let's put five columns and let's give our table a name of beers just because we'll be storing beers uh, in this example. So beers with five columns, let's click go. And this will ask us to, and this will basically ask us to set up some of the columns. And you can do this multiple ways. You can either do it with SQL or you can just use this uh, user interface to do it. And I'm just going to show you this, how to do it with this first. And then I'm going to show you the SQL command that you can use as well. And so use whatever you prefer. Let's um, focus on our fields. And the first field that I want to do is an ID because every beer is going to have a unique ID. And I want to make sure that this ID is set to either integer or maybe big int if you're going to have a big database. Then I'm going to leave this blank, this blank, this blank, and this blank. So might as well just go to the point here. So all I want to do in the first field is do auto increment uh, tick in here because what I wanted to happen, this is basically going to be your primary key. Every time we add a new beer in this case, I want each beer to have unique ID. Uh, so that's why I'm doing the auto increment. So let's click go. And we're done with this one. The second one that I want to do is name and for name, I'm going to go with voucher and we can set this to 255. This is up to you as well. So mess around with the numbers and the uh, types and so on. The next one I want to do is a tagline for the beer. Then we can set this as voucher as well. And we can just copy the one from above. 255 should be uh, sufficient. Then let's maybe add a description and for the description, I'm just going to do text. And I think text is just um, better for big amount of text. So let's do that. And I'm just going to leave the length as it is. So, and the last one that I want to do in here is maybe we want to add an image for the beer. I mean, to be completely honest, all this doesn't really matter. It's just an example. But let's say we have an image and for the image, maybe we can have a voucher. A voucher and the voucher can be set to 50 uh, in length. So this is all looking good. Let me zoom out a little bit. And before I save this, I just want to show you the alternative way of doing this. And this is, if I preview SQL, this should give me the code. And basically you can just create a table, give it the table, sorry, give it the database name, then the table name, and then list all the fields that you want. This will be available on my blog if you just want to copy it and go under the SQL and just run it from there. But I'm just going to do it the article way and press save. All right, so now that we have our table set up, it should look something like this. And you should see on ID that we have this golden key, which is good. We could quickly add a record. Just for example, we can go to insert and this gives us uh, the option to add quick to records. So let me think of a beer. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly add two beers just so we have some examples when we query uh, some data. So for the first one, I'm just going to copy this one that I found online from another API. So this is the tagline. We need a description. So let me copy and paste. And we need uh, an image. So maybe you can just copy this. And then let's add one more. So we have two, just like this. And as you can see, I'm skipping the IDs because they will be automatically added. So this will be one, this will be two and so on. So let's press go. And hopefully if everything worked correctly, you should see two rows inserted. And if we go to beers, you should see the rows inserted and they have the ID of one and two. And of course you can make this a lot more 
uh, interesting. You can do, you can add status, you can add date created, date uh, updated, and so on. But we're just going to keep it simple and leave it as it is. Now that we have the database, we can actually focus on our code. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's close this actually. So let's start writing our MySQL connection and we're going to be doing it slightly different today. So what I'm going to do is actually um, create a connection pool, which is basically supposed to be um, faster because connections can be reused when uh, future requests to the database are required and they're basically used to enhance the performance of executing commands on the database and it's like a cache of the database connection. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So to create a pool we can do const pool equals mysql dot create pool and inside here, we need to put the connection settings to our database and, and we can also specify a connection limit. So, so let's do connection limit of 10. And this is basically the maximum number of connections to create at once. Uh, you can read a little bit more about it in the documentation, in the official documentation. And the next few things that we need to do might be familiar to you. So now we need to specify the host name, the user, the password, and the database that we want to connect to. And for the host, I'm using localhost, so we can do host and then column localhost like this, but it needs to be in single quotes like so. Then we can tidy this up by moving it like so. Then comma, then we need to do user. And the user for me will be root. And then we need to specify the password. The password for me is actually just password. And last but not least, we need to specify the database that we want to use and for me, this will be the Node.js BS that we just created. Like so. Let's remove this and let's tidy this up a little bit like this. And we should be good to go. All right. Okay, now that we have created a pool and we have all the details in here, we can actually start uh, writing the first request, which will be uh, the get. So basically, I want to be able to get all BS in our database or get all BS or get all rows, whatever you prefer. And the way we can do this is we can do app.get and inside here we can specify the URL. So if we leave it blank, which will mean that we can simply go to localhost with the port number and this will be triggered. But if you wish, you can just put it like BS like this, and then you have to go to localhost 5000 and then slash BS, and this will trigger this get request. So I'm just going to leave it blank just because our application is to do with BS and I don't want to be put in slash BS and so on. Let's keep it simple. So inside here, then we need to have the request and response. And then this will be an arrow function and everything will leave in this arrow function. So to connect to a pool, we need to do pool. Use this uh, connection variable here. So pool dot get connection. And then we need to open and close with curly brackets like so. Then we'll have the then we'll have the error and connection like so. Then this will be um, this will be a narrow function like this. I think I'm writing this a little bit weird, but bear with me, it will make sense. And the first thing that we might want to do 
is check for errors. So we could potentially just do if error, we can throw error like so. Or you can do a specific thing that maybe you want to display on your API. Um, but I think this should be good enough just to throw the error in the um, PowerShell. And then we can focus on getting the uh, connection. But before we do the connection query, I just wanted to show you that you can also get the connection uh, the connection thread ID. I mean, this won't be useful now, but we could do console.log and just display it anyway. So just in case you need it as ID and we can put plus or we could have just do with the slanted. Um, we could just do the slanted single quotes and then do connect it as ID. And the ID would be connection dot thread ID. And this will give us the thread ID, but in this case, we won't use it. So it's a bit, so it won't be useful, but I'll leave it here as an example anyway. Okay, let's focus now on building our first query. And to do this, just for example, um, what we can do, the simplest way of using the query is basically we can use the query method. And this takes two parameters. And the first one is the SQL string, which will be SQL string, which we'll explain in a second. And the second one is the callback. So let's actually delete this as this is not useful at all. I just want to explain it and let's do the query. So what we have to do is connection dot query. And then inside here, if you're familiar with MySQL, this should be easy for you. In single quotes, we can do select. Everything, star means everything. And then we can select from the table name bears. And then, so we're going to have a callback of a error and rows, and this will be an arrow function again. So like this, and inside here, we can do connection release, which will return the connection to pool. So let's do connection dot release like this. And then the last thing that we want to do is check if we have an error maybe. So let's see if we have, if we don't have an error, then maybe we want to response send the rows. So the data that we're getting, but if we do have an error, we can do else and then we can do console log, log and we can just console log the error, I guess. Okay, let's save this tidy up a little bit and let's and let's go to the browser and see what happens. So if we go back to this URL of localhost with the port number 5000, press enter, you should see the two records that we added earlier. So we have the ID of one, uh, the name, the tagline, the description and a link to the image. And as you can see, they're the same in the database. So if we were to maybe, I don't know, let's change this to uh, two and save it. So if we refresh this, we should get like a two. And this seems to be working well. Now, instead of using the browser, which is fine for this to get data, I'm going to be using Postman. And let me show you and let me show you Postman. So in Postman, if you're not familiar, you can like create different collections and save some of the URLs that you're using. And for example, if I, uh, and for example, today I'll be using uh, this URL, obviously the local host of 5,000 and I've set it up in here. Um, I'm going to be using another one for to delete, to post and to put data and so on. So, it's pretty handy and we can literally just like get uh, get the request straight away in here 
and visualize the data a little bit better, I, I believe. So make sure you have this installed as well. It will help you massively if you're following along. But uh, this is all working. Now let's continue. Let's close this and let's go back to app.js. Now this is all good. And to be completely honest, we kind of already have done the hard bit of this tutorial. So now we are pretty much going to be copying and pasting this and kind of modifying it a little bit. So the next bit that I want to do is get a specific beer by ID. And um, what I mean by this is if I go to the browser quickly, if I go to localhost with a port of 5000 and I do, for example, slash and I put number of two, I want to be able to grab the beer with the ID of two. And if I put one, I want, I want to be able to grab just this object here, if this makes sense. So to be able to do this, and by the way, you can uh, do all sorts of stuff with this. You can maybe like uh, do it by name, by tagline, or by image, whatever you wish. So it's quite powerful. And this is how you can build on your API. So let's have a look at how we can get a specific uh, beer by ID. So I'm going to copy this code and because it's going to be very similar. So let's paste it in here and let's do get a beer by ID. Okay, to be able to get the ID, first of all, we need to do inside here, we need to do slash column and ID. So with the body parser, we can actually grab this ID and insert it into the MySQL query. And to do this, we can use the body parser. It's actually fairly simple. So in this case, we've already done the hard bit with the body parser here. We've included it and we've put those two uh, app users in here. So what we have to do now is do connection query, select everything from BS, and now we need to extend on this and do where ID is equals question mark. And the question mark is basically a placeholder. So we're escaping query values and we're basically trying to prevent from any SQL injection attacks. Now that we have the ID here, we actually need to grab the ID with a body parser. And to do this is actually fairly simple. We can just do in brackets rec dot params ID, and this should get the ID that we're passing from the browser into here and then into a code. We could also destructure this and make it a little bit cleaner, I guess, but I think that this should do the job. And last thing that I'm forgetting here is comma. So let's add the comma, save this, and let's see what happens. So if you go back to the browser and press enter, at the moment we're getting two results just because we only have two results. But if we do slash one, we should be able to get only the first result. And if we do slash two, we're getting the result with the ID of two. And if we do three, we shouldn't get anything because in our database, we don't have another record and that's absolutely fine. And I should have been using Postman for this, but uh, yeah, it's the same thing for now anyway. So if I do one, we can send it and just get the ID of one, which is here. So this is how we pass parameters and this is how we get them using the body parser. And now let's continue and have a look at how we can delete the record. So to delete the record will be actually surprisingly very similar to this. So what we have to do is let's copy this quickly and paste it in here. So maybe we can say delete a record slash pair. Okay, so we actually want to delete a particular record. So for example, uh, we might want to delete record number one or two. So I'm going to leave this um, in here. But th the main difference on this block is that instead of app.get, we actually need to do app.delete. Now we can leave the ID in here and then what we have to do is change and what we have to do is change or query a little bit. So instead of select, we need to do delete and then we need to remove the star because we just want to delete from base where ID is equals to the ID that we're passing in here from the URL. 
and hopefully technically speaking this should do the job and to make this a little bit better what we can do is instead of getting the rows we can just maybe display a message saying um i don't know bear with the record id and then we can pass the record id by using the dollar sign and the curly brackets and maybe we can just use this like so and maybe just do has been has been removed that okay and then if we get an error we'll just get the error in the con console so let's save this look at the console everything is looking fine so far no errors which is unusual and let's go to postman now and let's create a new tab which i already have created inside here and the important bit about this tab is that you need to set this from get to delete. So this one needs to be delete and the error will be exactly the same. And then we just need to specify which record we want to delete. So it would have been nice to have a few more records, uh, but we can just work with the two that we have. So if I do this, okay, so we have two records. Maybe I just want to delete uh, record number two. So let's test this. So inside here, we have to pass the number two and send this with the delete method. As you can see, we have beer with the record ID has been removed. Let's have a look whether this is true. So if you go back to the get method and send it, you will see that we only have one record left, which means that this was successful. If you go to the database, you will see that if you refresh, uh, go to beers, you will see that we only have one record. Okay, so this is a good time to actually have a look at how we can add a few more records. So to add records, let's go back and we can actually copy this and modify slightly. So as you can see, as soon as we created the first one, everything else seems to be very easy now. So let's do another one and this will be add a record slash bear. So for this, we need to change the delete to post. We need to remove this ID because we actually won't be passing um, any IDs in here. We'll be getting the parameters uh, with the uh, body parser, which I'll show you in a second. And we're just basically gonna pass an object with some uh, data like the name, the uh, tagline, the description and image. So let's do that. So everything else here stays the same. What we have to do is get the body parameters which we'll be passing. And to do this, we can actually create a variable. So let's do const of, I don't know, parameters, params to be short, and then we can do rec.body. So rec.body is basically going to get the data that we'll be passing in a second with Postman. I will show you. Uh, we could also console log this if you wanted to see it. Uh, maybe we can do, I don't know, where can we do it? Maybe we can do it in here. So we can do log and we can do rec.body uh, just so you can see what it looks like. So we need to also change the query a little bit again. So instead of delete, we're gonna have, so insert into BS where um, insert into BS and we don't need this. We actually need to just do set and then a question mark. And then we need to pass the parameters that we'll be getting uh, we'll be passing through the postman and getting with the body parser. So basically that's why we created this variable. And I think that we should be good to go, but let's change this message as well. And let's do beer with the record ID of, um, this is a difficult one because we'll probably have to do, because this is, will be an object, we'll probably have to do uh, I don't know, maybe params.id or you can pass the name or whatever. Um, we'll see if this works. 
has been added. Okay, uh, let's save this. So basically what happens with Postman, we're posting a JSON object, which BodyPass uh, allows us to do inside here, then and see how we can post some data. Okay, and for this, I've got another tab inside here. And what we have to do is, first of all, we need to make sure that we select post on this one. The URL stays the same, of course. And then we need to move to body, select raw as we'll be, as we'll be sending raw JSON file. And, and the important bit here is to also select JSON from here, uh, not JavaScript, JSON. And then we can pass some data. So for example, we have the name of, let's say, Budweiser. Tagline is the king of this. Then we have a description, I believe. And maybe we can just leave, I'll just copy some text from the internet. And then I believe that we had last one, I believe that we had an image. And for the image, we'll normally pass like a URL to the image, but I don't have one now. So well, maybe we can just leave it empty for the example. And I forgot to do a comma in here and that's why this is underlined. Okay, let's have a look at what happens if we actually pass this raw JSON uh, object. So if we send this, we should see beer, but we should get beer with the record ID of undefined uh, uh, has been added. It doesn't really matter. We can get the uh, maybe name or whatever. We could potentially just do name maybe. Uh, let's save this and try it again. So, so maybe we can do something else like punk IPA um, and then just Maybe we can leave this empty for now. It doesn't really matter so much. Uh, let's send. And okay, so we are now getting beer with the record ID. I need to change this as well. But we're getting the name now has been added. So let's just change this with the name has been added. Okay, so we're good to go in here. We can add records. And if you go back to Postman and query all the records, so let's send. We should see all the records and because, and we have the first one here, Budweiser and the Punk IPA that we just added. And of course, because the ID is a unique identifier uh, and we delete it too, that's why the ID is given, but this is not a problem at all. This is how the MySQL works. Basically, they just, basically the IDs will just increment, but that doesn't matter at all. All right. The last thing that we need to have a look at is how we can actually update an, a record. So for example, for the Punk API doesn't have a tagline, description, or an image. So maybe we want to update this record. And for this, let's copy uh, this code again, the add record beer, and paste it here. And then let's just change the title so we know what it is. Update the record slash beer. And for this one, what we have to do is instead of app.post, we have to do app.put. And then we can leave the URL as it is and so on. And now this one could be a little bit tricky, but instead of doing this, we're going to have to change it a little bit. Maybe we can do some data destructuring um, and what, and to do that, Potentially with Postman, we can send the JSON object here, grab it with the body parser and destructure the data like this. So we can do const and inside here, we can do ID, then name, tagline, description, and image. This will be equals the rec.body and hopefully we'll be able to grab the data and have it stored in those variables. So the ID, we can just the we can just use the ID to uh, pass the name, the tagline, and so on. So instead of parameters here, we can just do individual uh, individual objects, if that makes sense. So we can remove this now, 
and let's modify the query a little bit and for example what we could do is for example we could select the beer with the id of 4 punk apa and maybe update the name or add the description as we as you can see we don't have any images or description or tagline for it so let's do that let's have a look at how we can do that so to do this instead of insert you probably guessed it we're gonna have to do an update and then instead of into we're gonna remove this and we're just gonna do update bs set and then for example let's say we want to update the name so what we can do is do name equals question mark where equals question mark and instead of parameters now which doesn't exist anymore we deleted it uh, we can just pass the name so let's do instead of uh, object let's do name and pass the id so hopefully speaking we're gonna get the name from postman now with the id of four and update it let's have a look whether this works as you can see at the moment we have the punk api here with no other records so we can go to postman and do another tab in here so this tab will be obviously set to put now the same url uh, under body we can do raw json and let's say and let's say we wanted to change the id of four and we can change the name to whatever we like so let's say uh, punk apa updated hopefully speaking hopefully if we press send now For some reason this isn't working so let's go to here and error parser error you have error in the syntax okay let's have a look oh and this is because where we need to actually put what where is and this will be an id okay save this go back try to resend this again we want to update the name so hopefully if we send this Could not request. I think the app crashed for some reason, so let's restart this and start again. All right, maybe we can try it one more time. And now it doesn't seem to work. Okay. Update base set name is equals question mark. My ID is question mark. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so could have been uh, this here. I think it might have been uh, because this object didn't exist anymore. Uh, the one that I just removed. All right, so what we can do, in fact, we can just do name here anyway in dollar sign with the curly bracket and this would do it. So if we go to the database now and refresh, you will see that we have punk APA updated. And if we do it one more time, maybe we can do punk APA 123 and send this. You will see beer with the name punk API 123 has been update, updated. And if you go back to the database and refresh, you will see that we get 123. And we can do the same with the other parameters. So for example, we can do name. Um, I believe that we can do, let's try tagline as well. So maybe we can pass tagline now and let's try it. So let's save this, go to postman and add a tagline. This is a demo tagline. Let's send this. And we're getting an error, and this is because... Uh, this is because I'm getting a little bit tired probably now, but this is because tagline needs to be equals a question mark and space. Okay, save this. 
resend this. And as you can see, we are getting beer with the name Vancouver has been updated. If we post this, you should be able to see the tagline has been updated. If we go to the database, refresh this, you see we have the tagline and maybe we can do the description and the image quickly just for this example and we can wrap it up. So as you can imagine, you can now do comma and just do description equals question mark. Make sure you pass the description in here. Just like so, we can do view toggle world wrap. Uh, this is looking ugly now, but it doesn't matter. Um, then the description and we have image, which is the last one. So let's do image and add the image before, uh, after the description, sorry. Save this, go to Postman and let's post some more data. Let's update this. So we had the description. What and I don't know, some beer and let's add image. We forgot the comma. And then the image would be a new URL to image. Obviously this will be a real URL, but this will do the job. So let's update this. And we get another error. And again, I forgot to do equals and question mark. Save this. Let's go back, send this, and hopefully we get a punk API123 has been updated. And if we go to here and post it, you will see that this record has been updated. And let's actually uh, try to update another record. Maybe we can update record number three. And let's say we want to, let's copy this. And let's say we want to update We want to update the image only. Maybe we can do uh, image dot image one dot JPEG or whatever. And Budweiser is the king. Budweiser is the king of beers. So let's update this. And if we go back and resend this, we will see that we're getting. Uh, Budweiser is the king of beers, which is pretty awesome. No errors in here. As you can see, they're locked in, in, in the console as well, which is pretty cool. Um, the database is working quite well. And that's pretty much everything from this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you smash the like, share the video with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to say hello in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Ruddy and you're watching my channel, Ruddy the Brand.